There may be notes. I do apologise. The reason being, I have two things. I suffer from attention deficit disorder and I'm dyslexic. So when I'm writing my show, I kind of sit there, not able to really read my notes, but I'm too busy going, oh, look, a butterfly. So if it is random, there is a reason. Um, right, I should explain. The show is called Stroke the Panda, which I know is stupid, but it's a reference to something I did very drunk. Because I tried chatting up a girl once by going, I am the panda! Stroke the panda for panda loving! <laughs> right, which granted, I know, is possibly the most stupid way to meet a girl. So that's the point of the show. If that is the most stupid way you can try and meet someone, what is the best way? What is the way that will try and, like, will, will work best with a girl? The reason I'm doing this is because I, um, a few months ago, I broke up with my ex when I found out she was fucking mental. <laughs> no, no, seriously, mental does not... Right, I like wacky. I'm a comedian. But nobody should ever have to come on to, <laughs> I shaved the hamster. <laughs> So I ended up moving in with my mate and I realised I had to move out of my mate's flat when I woke up in the morning to hear him staggering down the stairs going, where are my pants? Why am I wet? Right? So, I, no, seriously, I decided I had to sort out my life. So I moved out and I moved back in with my parents. Don't judge me. Right? And I thought, right, I, I'll, I'll get myself a good girlfriend. So that's the whole point of this. Do any dating systems work? Speed dating, lonely hearts, uh, Supermarket dating, supermarket singles nights. Right, I thought these were an urban legend, but they genuinely exist. So for my show, I tried them. Um, basically, I should explain, the reason being, the reason why I'm dreadful at talking to women is because I had a problem when I was a kid. Right, um, I'll use you as an example. How old were you when your voice broke? 14. 14. Uh, sir? 14, 15, right, I shit you not, my voice is quite deep, right? My voice broke when I was eight. <laughs> right, no, you put yourself in the position of the dad who gets a phone call for his little princess from this voice. <laughs> as a result, no, as a result, I never got to speak to any girls on the phone. The problem is, I never got to speak to them as in person either. Because I was eight, my hero was Spider-Man. I wanted to be Spider-Man. So I asked my mum for a Spider-Man suit for Christmas. And she knitted me one. <laughs> now, I'm sorry, a fat kid in the park, in the pissing rain, in a woolen Spider-Man suit, it's not a good look. So as a result, I never really learned how to talk to girls. <coughs> So I never became any good at it. And I, I kind of started doing this show, and I started thinking, am I looking for girls in the wrong places? Because let's face it, right, I work and live in Salford. Right, and there can't be a worse place to look for a girl than that, because I'm sorry, I'm fed up of trying to step through a girl's earrings to talk to her. <laughs> I fucking love that line. <laughs> right, basically... At the end of the day, this is genuinely why I got into stand-up, to meet girls. Well, that's not exactly true. I had a choice at uni, because I did a performing arts course, right? I had a choice. I either did stand-up, or I did dance. <laughs> oh, God, right? I can already dance. I did six years of ballet and tap and foreign modern jazz when I was a kid, so I could move, right? So I, I kind of got into it that way. And then, I, I basically, right, I came up with this idea with my mate Steve, who's an idiot, when drunk. And the problem is, right, I probably might have backed out of this show. I might not have done it. Had I not for the fact that when I thought of this show, when drunk, then applied to do this show, still whilst drunk. No, it's not an email you want to wake up to. Congratulations, your venue is booked. We'll see you there. You're there for the month. Right, because I love Edinburgh, because it's the only place in the world I can walk down the street and someone, for no apparent reason, will just yell, Hey! Big man! For no reason. <laughs> right? And the thing is, it's not as if it's the first time I've woken up to a drunken email. Because I basically have now had to ban myself from using the computer when drunk. Because nobody should ever have to wake up to the email saying, we are delighted to tell you that your 500 fridge magnets are in the post. <laughs> Maybe I'm look I it's the wrong way about it, trying all these systems. Maybe there's a better way. Like, the people you know who are in couples, they're the people who are genuinely most like you in life. So, surely the way they met people is a better way of you trying to meet somebody. 
right? Oh, so I thought, right? Because I should point out, this show is basically a series of me fucking up and looking a dick a lot, right? <laughs> so I started asking people how they met their partners and things. And I used um, MySpace for it. I put up a blog thing about explaining what I was doing. And did anybody have any stories about how they met somebody or whatever? So I could try and recreate them. And the first one I genuinely got was, my parents met in court. That's not easy to recreate. <laughs> right? So I skipped that, and I went to the second message, which was from one of my best friends in the world, a girl called Ellie, who told me about her parents. Now, her parents had lived in the same village for years, but never met each other, and they met at a mutual friend's um, party. And her dad turned around to her mum and went, how big are your hands? Can you hold a pint? <laughs> right? Which is brilliant, except for the fact I got this as a message. And how I said it is, how big are your hands? Can you hold a pint? That's not how I read it. I read it more as in, how big are your hands? Which is not a good thing to say to a girl. I got punched quite hard. So I, I kind of thought, oh, bollocks, none of this is right. So what I thought was, who is the person most like me? Who is going to be the best example for me to use? And I thought, my dad, right? Because he's genuinely the person who's most like me in the world. So I spoke to my dad. And he basically couldn't remember how he met my mum <laughs> at all. What was said, where they were, anything. But what he could tell me was he remembered the moment he thought, she's a keeper. Right, which is a worrying thing to hear from your dad about your mum. Right? <laughs> so I thought, right, OK. Now, I need to explain something to you. In the 60s, there was a major dating technique that was used by blokes whereby you would take a girl out for a drink and a meal to the countryside and accidentally, on the way back, run out of petrol, <laughs> right? So then you call the AA, but it's not like the AA now where they turn up in like half an hour, an hour and rescue you. In them days, there weren't as many. So you could be there a good two, three hours waiting to be rescued. So you're alone in a country lane with a girl you quite like, what could possibly happen? Right? This was a dating method. Right? The thing is, I think my dad is the only person in history who genuinely just ran out of petrol. <laughs> right? I know this because he was not a member of the AA. <laughs> Nobody was coming to rescue him. So what did my dad do to save the day? He got my mum to push the car... <laughs> No, for six and a half miles. What was he doing for these six and a half miles? He was sat in the car, steering. How do I exist? The thing is, it, it kind of went wrong because I kind of did meet somebody. And this has really fucked me up because I now don't have an end to the show. The show is called Stroke the Panda, right? So I've now had to come up with an ending to a show with the most moronic title in the world. And if you try thinking of something for Stroke the Panda, it's not very easy. I thought Google might be a friend, might help me. I put Stroke the Panda into Google, and all that came up was information about the show I didn't have an ending for. That is not helpful. <laughs> right? So I basically, me and my mate, Steve, the one I talked about before, we got a bit drunk, which is kind of the whole problem with this show. I get drunk with Steve, and then things happen badly. Right? And we came up with an idea. Right, because I became obsessed with the idea of having a picture taken with a panda for the poster. And I thought, if we do it, then it can be a story for the end of the show. Problem is, our bright idea involved borrowing, and I do use the word borrowing, not stealing. We were going to return, because there's not a lot of uses for a very big panda in my house, I'll be honest. We were going to borrow a panda from Nelsley Safari Park. No, because right, he has a Volkswagen camper van, so the idea was, leave the back door open, bit of bamboo inside, <laughs> drive through, panda gets in, shut the door, fuck off. <laughs> right? This is our bright idea. Thing is, me and Steve were both idiots. None of us, neither of us, actually researched it, and the fact that Nelson Safari Park doesn't fucking have any pandas. <laughs> Apparently, they're quite rare. So what did we end up with? A fucking tiger. Now, have you ever tried get? No. Have you ever tried getting a pissed-off tiger into a panda suit? He was not fucking happy. 